Welcome to this video series for people who are new to Postman. In this video, we'll take a look at how you can chain multiple requests in Postman to create a specific workflow. If you have missed any of the previous videos, make sure to check the video description for the entire playlist. So far we have used the GitHub API and we have created a repository and an issue in that repository. And on top of that, we have also added some tests that ensure the API is working as we expect them to work. Essentially, we have a very simple workflow. We are creating a repository, in that repository creating an issue, and so on. To complete the workflow, let's now figure out how to delete the repository. It would be annoying to generate so much test data and never clear it. And we also want to make sure that the deletion of a repository works. Let's take a look at how we can do that. I'm going to look again into the API documentation and take a look at the repositories. Let's check if there's any information in regards to deleting a repository. And we'll find here this endpoint, delete a repository. And again, we need to provide some parameters here. I'm going to simply go ahead and copy this. And you'll notice that the HTTP verb that we have to use is delete. Open up a new tab, select delete. Paste the address here. We we'll also need the base URL. And at this point, we can also save this request inside the GitHub API. So I to get these parameters to properly work, I'm gonna write them in the Postman style with a column before the name, which is just a placeholder. We can use here the variable owner that we have defined previously. And we also have here the repository, which is actually at this point still a hard-coded value. So you've seen here in the past request, we have used this repository name. But in this first request, we are actually creating new repositories all the time. So it would be useful to have the name of the repository. So let's take a look here at the body. And you will see here that we have the repository name. Now, as you can see here, in, the, in this case, the repository name does change. So what we have defined here as a collection variable as the repository name gets changed a bit because the spaces are being replaced with dashes. So essentially, we need a way to get this additional value. So we can either do this ourselves here in the prequest script and just define a variable that doesn't contain any spaces. That would be definitely a possibility. Or we can simply parse the body and get that information from there and simply define a new variable. So this is what we are going to do right now. Since we already have here JSON data defined, I'm just going to move it outside the function so that we can access it. And I'm going to also remove it from here since it's not going to be needed anymore. So we can again go and define a new variable, pm.collectionVariables.set. And let's call it new repository name. And we're going to get it from JSON data dot name. So if we are running this request, the variable was created inside a collection. So we can click here and take a look at the collection itself. And we'll see here that we have a variable repository name. We have here also variable new repository name. So this will allow us to use it here inside create issue. New, new repository name. I'm gonna copy this value and gonna use it also here to delete the repository. So this usage of variables essentially ensures that we don't need to copy paste information from one request to the other. So imagine if every time you create a repository, you have to get a repository name, put it inside create issue. We have done this automatically by writing a script here, which automatically sets this new variable and we're using this in all other requests. So let's go ahead and try to delete this repository now. 
And what we're gonna get back here is a status 403 forbidden. And it says here you must have admin rights to the repository. So obviously the token that we have previously generated doesn't have the right to delete a repository. So we can create a new repository, but we don't have the right to delete it. So for that reason, we have to go back and generate a new token. I'm gonna click here on generate new token. I'm gonna call it postman number two. Set the expiration date. I'm gonna set the same privileges as before. So the repository has to be selected. And let's see if we have something with delete repository. So this has to be checked as well. I'm gonna create the token. And I'm simply gonna go ahead and copy it. Go back in Postman. And now this is the beauty of using Postman variables. All we have to do is go here inside the collection itself, go to variables. And I'm gonna simply replace this value here once and all requests will now use this new token. So let's go ahead and run this request once again. Now you see here, we're getting 204, no content. Since it starts with two, it still means that this has been successful. It means that this repository has been deleted. Now we can check that this repository has been indeed deleted by using a get request. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna go again to the API documentation. And let's try to fetch a repository. So you see here get repository. So you'll see here it has repos owner repo. It's essentially almost the same structure. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. It saves us some time. I'm gonna rename it it get repository. And instead of delete, I'm gonna use get. Let me show you again what I mean by that. So let's create a new repository. And now let's try and get it. You will see we get a status 200 okay. So this is the new repository because the variable has been automatically updated. Now let's try and delete it. And try to get it again. And at this point, we will get a 404. Now for this scenario, getting a 404 is not an error. This is what we had expected. We have deleted the repository, so if we try to fetch it again, it doesn't make sense for that repository to still be there. Now, this essentially completes our workflow. We can write here a test where we're actually testing that this is a status uh, 404 not found. Status is 404, because this is what is expected at this stage by the way we have organized our workflow. We're creating a repository, we're creating an issue in that repository, we're deleting the repository, and then we're checking again if we have successfully deleted the repository. This is a simple workflow. It is essentially a chain of requests that need to be executed in a specific order. We have also used variables to make everything dynamic and to ensure that we don't need to change anything about the request. We now can go to every request, simply click on send, go to the next request, and so on. And this is a very important step towards automation. I hope you have managed to follow along and if you have faced any issues, make sure to check the video description for some troubleshooting ideas.